Hi there, and welcome to another Parker Adams Boat Sales video walkthrough tour. We're on tour at the moment, aren't we? Where we, we are. Come? Where have we come to? We're actually in Belfast Harbour Marina in Belfast. In Belfast. And we all know that's in Northern Ireland. And um, we're a stone's throw from the Titanic Museum, which is just over there. We can see it from here, so we might have a little wander up there in a minute and have a look. Um, but we're bringing um, to you today a walkthrough tour on a fantastic Sea Ranger 50. And it really is a stunning boat. We've been out, we've done drone photographs uh, and video, so you can see an overlay here of the boat pushing through the water as we came out of Belfast Harbour. And it's got such a real presence of a little ship. It really is very special. Um, and this boat is around about £300,000. And I have to say, for £300,000, you feel that you are getting a hell of a boat here. It's three cabins, it's two heads, you've got obviously lounging area here, Absolutely. lounging area at the back. I mean, the Sea Ranger 50 isn't always on everybody's radar. Yeah. You know, it's not something you think about when you're looking for a 50 foot boat, but it's definitely one to consider. The build quality is excellent, built to a very, very high standard. And we're going to show you on this full walkthrough tour all the features this boat has. So we're bringing that to you right now. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I always forget to say that. Thanks, mate. That's all right. You can rely on me. Right, so we're going to start this video from outside. Um, as you can see, it's cold. So I've got my coat on. Um, it is um, the start of February and it's getting a very cold snap now. But as we come round, into the bow of the Sea Ranger 50, you get a real idea of the size and it really is like a little ship. Um, all laid to teak, so you've got the nice teaks on the side rails, um, really good stainless steel, very sturdy rails all the way round, um, and round into a nice anchor space as well. Um, obviously this can be controlled from here or um, down at the helm. Um, great big anchor lockers as well, but I really, you sort of really get a feel of the build quality when you start to look at some of the um, some of the metal work, um, especially um, where the where the ropes go through. I think it's a fairly still, I suppose it is. And you can see this is even on nylon bushes to enable it, the ropes to sort of flow and be able to pull them through easily without snagging. Really nice quality. Um, but as you walk around, um, you can actually use this space at the front um, for a socialising space. You could have a nice couple of chairs up here. You can really enjoy this bow area, especially when you are down at anchor. Um, and even goes up here as well. It's all laid to teak as well. Um, it's another usable space if you wanted to have some lounging cushions here. There isn't any fitted to this boat, but it is an obvious place to put some. And you can do a nice bit of sun lounging here as well. But again, you get a real feel for the quality of the boat. Um, now, um, I would just like to point out that the teak is it's very nicely finished. I do like it when it's silvered like this, but there are spots around um, where it is slightly needs a bit of attention especially sort of around this edge here, it's slightly lifting and some of the corking needs dealing with as well, as you can see just on the front here. Generally though, it's in really good shape. But you just need to bear in mind there'll be a few minor bits of teak work to be doing. It um, might also be worth just pointing out the, um, the shine on this. We met up with the guy that maintains the boat uh, yesterday. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, we, when we first arrived here yesterday, we met up with the guy that actually maintains the boat. Um, I'll put the name of his company just down on here because I meant to try and remember it and I can't, so I'll, I'll name the company just underneath. Um, but one thing is about this boat, and you, we've talked about this on the, tour on the walkthrough tours before, this boat's been ceramic coated, so it's that next generation on from just a hard marine wax, and you can see the shine on this boat really is remarkable. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right there, John. A yes, dangerous anchor windlass shot. there. So <laughs> you can see here the shine on this boat is fantastic. This is a 2007 boat, um, but the luster on this is, well, it looks like it just popped out the factory. It really is presented in beautiful condition and it's absolutely been done everywhere. So wherever you look and you've got a, a shiny surface, that surface is very, very shiny. Um, another thing that I like as well, just draw attention here, um, all of the windows have got these little covers over them. And that's great because it means if it's raining, then you can still get ventilation into the cabin, but your rain's not going to come through the windows. So I think that's really nice. When I, I personally, ever I sleep on a boat, I like to get lots of air through. Um, quite often I've woken up with the hatch open and end up getting rain on my face. So it's quite nice to see uh, little touches have been thought about like that. Um, the boat also comes with these washboards, so for mooring up. Um, if you're going up against a, a harbour wall or something like that, then these are a very good way um, of putting your fenders just on the inside of these washboards and it protects your hull when you're going against um, harbour walls and things. So that's I do like the silvering on this. I know a lot of people would like to bring it back to sort of a normal sort of teak colour, but I do even like the fact the washboards have 
It's all the, it's all the, the same, same, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know exactly <laughs> it's what you really mean. smart. It's really smart. Should we keep walking around this yeah, way? Yeah, yeah, carry on yeah. your way then. Um, something else, we'll come on to this early, uh, later. Love the doors on this boat. This has got mm. really, really chunky doors. That one's on. locked, it's been locked. Yeah, oh, that I one's locked it. Yeah, locked it. I opened that earlier and I thought I could open it from outside. I'll show you that later. The doors hinge out beautifully. We'll show you that on the other side. But as you walk around, you can see there's more of these uh, covers over these windows. Um, and the covers on the back here, you'll see from this drone video here, that the boat, when it's, this whole area at the back is all enclosed, which makes it a fantastic socialising space. And this can be kept in place when you're going along, as well as when you're in harbour. Now, this back area here, it's almost like a little personal private patio for the rear aft cabin. Um, there's entrance here into the aft cabin, but once you come out, you've got this lovely little area where I think you'd stick a deck chair, have something out here. Yeah, that's the doorway there from the aft. We'll show you it from inside, but yeah, it's really, it's a really it's nice, nice addition area. You can almost come out of the aft cabin in the morning with a cup of coffee and just yeah. sit out here on your own private balcony. We're not quite sure what was gone into these rails before. We wonder whether that's some form of step of seat or something or other into the rail. So I'll ask the owner if there's anything that bolts into there, but something's been done in there in the past. Um, you've just got some rails there. And then you've got a 200 kilogram capacity passerelle as well. Um, and that can lift a tender onto this bathing platform. So you'll see that there are chocks here in place ready to take a tender. Um, and that of course could be whatever the owner wished to spec. But you've got 200 kilograms to work with on the passerelle, which is really nice. And it's a nice extended platform as well. Mm. Um, it was an option on this boat um, originally to have the extended platform, which this is, um, but it really um, gives you that opportunity then to put a tender actually on the platform nice and easily using the passerelle. And, uh, and of course, um, it's very, again, laid to teak. Um, and I do like the way the edges are curved. Um, so it just enables that just better access. And then when you're maneuvering as well on and off of a pontoon, if you have a, a, a sharp right hand corner, you always yeah. catch it and it sort of negates that. Um, but even the door there as well, it's quite a nice little door out onto the platform as well. I like the way they, yeah, I like the way yeah, that, that's the built in, that. the hinges are built in, it's another good sign of quality. And again, look, it's all just teak still, nice chunky bits of teak and just stainless steel, which we really like. Exactly the word I was about to use. Everywhere you look, it looks chunky. You could just have a thin piece of teak on the top there, it would do the same thing. Yeah. But actually the boat builders have built this really, really solid feeling boat. It's great. Um, window at the back there as well so again we'll show you the aft cabin but that gives you a really nice vista out the back as well um, and then you've also got these two aft lockers in fact i'll take this and jonathan i'll let jonathan yeah. show you inside there so there's an aft locker on each side there's one on this side and there's another one on this side here um, and what goes down into there is just an enormous there's lazarette a, style yeah, space the, uh, the valeter was in here yesterday it was wasn't it we didn't quite what he was he up to it was uh yeah, if you drop down, it's actually a light in there as well, which right. is lit, so I should be able to show you. But you can drop down and then you can get a really good look through and be able to inspect the rudders um, and the chlorifier down it, here. It's in it down at the other end. And other accesses, yeah. You've got the heater down here. So there's lots of accesses, two things, all nice and easy. Again, you can climb through and you go all the way through to the other side as well. There's little washboards here you can remove um, to gain better access. Um, but again, but also great story. So when these boards are in place, if you put stuff in here, it won't get into the middle where the moving parts are. They're very, very useful. Let's put that up. Thanks, and then this is the access down on the other side. Familiar story, but it's nice you can see steps there onto the exhaust. And then you've also got seacocks all labelled with their on and off positions or what each of those seacocks does in a really easy position. Uh, so many, so often seacocks are buried down in the bilges and it's very hard to access them. Um, but it's great to see that there is a, a nice array of four of the seacocks just there on that rear bulkhead. I'll close that back up again. Yeah, Transit is a shower, so there's a hot and cold shower just inside there as well which is perfect. If you come out, out of the water through the transom gate, you've got a really nice little shower area here as well. I'll just give you a different vista. I'll just film you. You can just get an idea then of this back section as a whole with the nice chunky platform. See how thick it is as well, that rear platform and the back gate. And it's this lovely deep blue color as well. The gel coat's in really nice condition. Is, actually. Um, really, really nice. And of course, then you've got where Andrew's standing 
is kind of your rear balcony, which then continues round. Yeah, and the gauge of this, um, the guardrails all the way around, it's just all very, very solid. Yeah, I'm really, yeah. really impressed by this. It's Absolutely. the second Sea Ranger boat we've dealt with actually in the last couple of weeks. We've just taken on a, a Sea Ranger 43 in Hythe, and we were equally impressed by that. So it's a boat builder that, to be honest, hasn't been on our radar. As Jonathan said earlier, you may not have thought about it, but actually, since coming across them, we found them to be really excellently built boats. Um, I'm just going to show you there's a little ladder as well. So there's a transom ladder. Um, also um, access, so we can see you can get that rear access on the bathing platform but also there's a very nice um, little ladder for side access and you can use this either side. So the way sorry, sorry about this, I'm just coming up here to turn off the VHF because that will be chuntering away. There you go, that's off now. So that sidebar lifts up to complete the rail and again very nicely built. Um, so it just gives you easy access straight onto the boat and I'm going to follow Andrew down <laughs> now into this slightly elevated rear cockpit area. You're always the one that gets to sit down and lounge places. I'm going to lounge today. <laughs> this, is, this is a really nice space. So it really depends on how you want to use this space as a family. Um, the person who owns this boat, they've clearly got just um, perhaps a couple of people that use it regularly. So you've got two really lovely teak chairs here just to enjoy this back space. But if you wanted to, of course, you could put a table up here as well. So you could have this as a separate dining area uh, to enjoy you know, the vista out over the marina. The teak is all in really, really nice condition. And Jonathan rightly mentioned about the corking externally. Um, the teak under here is in fantastic condition. I can't see any corking lifting up here at all. Um, so it's really nice. And quite often with a boat of this style, with this rear cockpit area, it kind of restricts the, um, the flybridge. So if yeah, you go up into the next section, it's not the case, because with this you still get a very sociable flybridge. And I think it's got my favourite teak table that I've seen on any of the boats that we've done. This teak table is currently in its small position, believe it or not, because it's actually a really, really large table there already. But actually, if you lift it out, and again, look at the, the gauge of the wood on that, it's huge. It is just in beautiful condition, uh, and it's huge. So you would comfortably get, well, you can ha absolutely have eight people up out here, yeah. I'd say, with ease, um, if like not a more. a proper dining table, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's um, really, you can really raise nice. and lower it as well. Yeah. So it is on gas struts. Well, not gas struts, but you can raise and lower it on the legs there. And I like things like just little tension to detail again. You've got mm. the cup holders cut just into that area there. They could easily not have added that, but it's just nice thinking about stuff like that. There is storage underneath all the seating as well. And so we've currently got the flybridge cover, so the covers, the flybridge cover stores under there. And then if I just come round, what we've missed is there is a, a gate here as well, so you can close this off. Um, there is a life raft holder there as well. You can see there's a life raft in it at the moment. Um, is that going with the boat? Uh, yes, it is. Yep, so the life raft is going with the boat, so six man. And it's valid and until November 2024. Yeah, it's November 2024 date, so it's in date. And then we've got this nice fridge as well so you've got a fridge up on the flybridge and then a sink um sorry about the cloth in there <laughs> um, but then it's uh, it just looks like it's a cold water sink though so it just produces cold water um but very useful having a fridge up on the flybridge you don't have to go all the way down the stairs mm -hmm. to get a drink and um, we'll go into more detail on the plotter and the navigation aids that the boat has got when we go down to the lower helm position a bit later. But um, here you can see it's a nice blend actually of the older uh, style navigation and the new. So it's clearly had some upgrades through the years. Remember, it's only a 2007 boat, but it's at that age where plotters have come on a lot since 2007. And in recognition of that, it's been upgraded with twin uh, Raymarine hybrid touch plotters. That's a nine inch and there's a 12 inch plotter down below. They've added a new Ray, I think it's a Ray 63, um, VHF on there as well but then you've got the original Raymarine autopilot and tri-data here. Um, Volvo Penta of course this is powered by twin Volvo Penta D9s now they generate 500 horsepower each but you, of the age of that engine because it's a later generation D-series you get all the digital displays you've got your fuel consumption and all your information on here and then of course you've got this later generation um, Volvo displays as well. Yeah, the LCD displays on these rev counters also show information as well. They're not just hours yeah. like some are, and that can be controlled by the EVC units as well. And they work. So, and they work. And they work, yeah. <laughs> the and, you, the and you also get the electronic controls as well with the D9s, so none of the clunky cables. It's um, all fly-by-wire. 
as you say, on the, um, the CAD series engines, you always have an issue on the older gauges that the hours stop working after probably just a few years. Yeah. Uh, whereas on this later generation, we've yet to see <laughs> really any that don't work. <laughs> um, twin helm as well. And they both have bolsters, so you can stand or sit. Um, they are adjustable as well. Um, so it's nice to see. Um, I do like two individual seats. It just seems a bit more attention to detail, I think. Yeah. And then uh, just a couple of the other things. You've got a searchlight here, and then also a very powerful bow thruster. So Jonathan was on the helm taking this out earlier, um, and you could really feel that once that bow thruster started moving, it gave a lot of power to the boat. Yeah, nice boat to manoeuvre as well. Nice and easy. Um, we took it off the berth, um, and you can see there's a yacht in front, and there's a yacht quite tight behind. It very easily came off, and then we headed down the channel out to the main bay where we did the drone video. And you can see just there, that is the Titanic Museum that you can see right in the middle there. And that's the rest of, it's a very small marina here, yeah. um, but it's right in the center. So we can walk directly into the center of Belfast from here. It's a really nice position. Right, we've got on the top here. So you've got a uh, digital uh, radar, so it's a Raymarine digital radar. It's not one of the Doppler ones, but it is a digital one, so it's interfaceable with any of the later generation um, axioms or any upgrades you want to do on the system. Um, up there you've got an AIS antenna, you've got a digital TV antenna, you're obviously your, your anchor light, your running light, uh, GPS aerials, and your searchlight. I think that's everything. Yeah. <laughs> but well, it's all, it's all nicely, nicely contained mounted. there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's nicely mounted on the mast. So very, very nicely done. Um, and you can see obviously the, the roof to the, um, to the downstairs cockpit. Um, so this could be your sheltered area and then from the sun and then you can get up into the sun up on the flybridge which is nice. Um, you can see it's hinged as well. So this mast is hinged so it does reduce the air height um, if you do end up having to go aboard in when you've got a height restriction and also transport as well. I think I believe you could probably transport it yeah. just by lowering that. Right, should we uh, get ourselves back down? I, I can show you the door I wanted to show now earlier. Yes. <laughs> It'll Shows actually work. Door. In fact, I'm going to close it up. So the reason I like this door so much is because I like things that are a bit different. Most doors just hinge outwards. This door opens straight out and then hinges back on itself. Yeah. And it reminds me of like a sort of a pilot ship or something that's going to have a lot of weather being hitting at it because it's also a very, it's a weather type door. So you've got seals on the inside to press it in. Because this boat, in terms of capability, and start taking my shoes off now, um, it has a range of about 800 to 900 miles. So if you're traveling at probably six or seven knots, just the sort of speed you would on a sailing boat, then actually you can take this all the way around Britain. You can take this down to the Med. You can explore Northern Europe. It does create a lot of options for this boat. And if you do encounter any seriously heavy seas, these doors will keep you safe. So let's go inside. So we left, it has a very, very efficient heating system in here. In fact, it's got two Everspatcher D5 heating systems. And I actually had to turn one of them off. Um, well, I would say it heated up the boat when we came on board for the first time yesterday um, in the space of probably 20 minutes from being really chilly. Mm. So yeah, this is that mechanism on the door. So you close it, lock it in, and then if you're out at sea and it's heavy weather, you can close these hatches up just to make sure that, that water to, it, the door remains totally watertight, which is really cool. It is cool. Should we start with the galley area? Yes. So the galley is, I would say, very much ahead of its time, actually, because on recent boats, it's only really since 2012, 13, that galleys have come upwards and have been part of that social area on boats. But on this one, it's up here already. So a lot of the traders we've had a look at, the galley is right the way down in the bowels of the ship. But I love the fact that the galley is up here. And it's a very, very functional galley with lots of work surface, despite not actually taking up very much space. If you think if this wasn't here, you'd probably just have a sideboard here, maybe a seat up here. But actually, there's not really doing very much, but you've got a whole galley. So you've got a four, four burner um, hob on there. So it's a ceramic hob. And of course, this boat is fitted with a generator. So it has a 9.5 kilowatt generator. So this boat can be totally self-sufficient whilst out at sea. Um, you've got a single sink. Um, now, this, the owner of this boat, I'm assuming this will all be taken with him, is clearly a coffee connoisseur because this is the most incredible, I don't even begin to pretend That's I cool. know how this works, but it's got pressure gauges, it's got everything on it. So there's the sort of thing you see in a shop and just buy. It, it is, isn't it? Just because it looks cool. I think some serious amounts of coffee comes out of there. And even on the kettle, look at that. No, it's not coming with the boat, but I like the things like this. Look, you can even set it to be 100 degrees, 80 degrees. How, how hot do you want your kettle to go? It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love gadgets. You do um, really good. And the other thing, whilst talking about gadgets, is, move my shoes, put in the wrong place, um, there is a microwave and a dishwasher. 
So it's dishwasher. dishwasher. Look at that. So it's a really big size dishwasher, dishwasher as well. Dishwasher. Um, and funnily enough, the other Sea Ranger that we went on last week also had a dishwasher on board. Yeah, they had one <laughs> fitted. Didn't yeah. They? So that's really nice. And then you've got your convection and grill. So it's a combi uh, grill and microwave just there. Lots and lots of storage, so you've got your uh, cutlery drawer is just inside there. And then all the way along here, you've got storage space as well as storage space on the other side as well. So it, it really is an excellently thought out galley area, this, that doesn't take up much space, but has everything that you'd possibly need. Yeah, very good. So pass back to you. Right, OK, very good. You're, very you're good. good at lounging. Do you want to talk about the lounging area? Yes, <laughs> yes I like the lounging area. Well, the, um, it's got this lovely seating, which we sat at the start as well. Um, the table... Um, it has storage in it as well. It's even got a drawer in it, which I quite like. So again, they've got cutlery in here. So using nice. that as a cutlery drawer as well. Um, and then storage in here. This is removable as well. It's only screwed onto the floor. Um, mm. we, we, you'd want to manoeuvre it or mm. move it around, but you do need to remove this table to get full engine access. So there is a really good engine access we'll show you because it's quite nice. It's very, sh it's very small ship-like. And this boat has this feeling of quality all the way through. Like it is probably built like a small ship as opposed to like a, a, a pleasure boat, if you know what I mean. Um, but um, but there's great storage everywhere. So these sort of cupboards, there's an additional fridge here with a small freezer compartment. Um, and then these pull out for shelving. And you can see all the glasses are built in. And it even gives you a little That's surface really nice there to put your glasses on. And then underneath here is another one for your bottles. And I mentioned this earlier again about this boat being quite ahead of its time. Um, the matte finish on the woodwork. At this time, mm. a lot of manufacturers are going for that high gloss cherry effect. And I think it would have dated more if it had got that. The fact it's got this matte wood around, yeah. uh, it really does look fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but when it comes to um, tech as well, um, it has got some tech on here. So we've got a stereo system here with a built-in iPod um, jack in, to, in here where you can put your phone in if you wanted to. Um, but if you look over here, there's a DVD player. And then we can see speakers on the ceiling. There's speakers around the cabins as well. And in each cabin, there is a Opus bus unit. And that means that you can choose then between the diff by between the TV, what you want to play through the speakers, whether it's the TV, whether it's the stereo, whether it's the iPod, you can pick what you want to go to go on to the different um, AV systems. Um, so the TV here, you can see is built in. Um, and I would say is obviously that's been fitted from new. Um, it's, um, but actually when you're sat here, you, the table doesn't actually get in the way. I thought it would, but when you're sat here relaxing, you're looking straight at the television. Um, there are TVs in the other cabins as well. This also has, um, we've got the diesel heating on as Andrew said, it's got two Eberspatcher um, diesel heating units, one here and one in the rear cabin. Um, but the vents go into all the front cabins as well and the heads as well. Um, but also, um, this boat has air conditioning. So there's an air conditioning control here. So it has air conditioning and diesel heating, not forgetting it's got the generator as well. So it's really a fully loaded boat. You are getting everything that you'd want. It's about that, just that self-sufficiency, isn't it? This re it really is a boat that you could go off and say, you know, I'm going off for six months and I'm going to yeah. go traveling. I'm going to yeah. go and see where I want to go. You can do <laughs> long passages without having to worry about fueling. The yeah. fuel tank's 2,200 litres. So, yeah. Um, and like Andrew says, you can do up to 800 miles at just a steady pace. But it's quick as well. So yeah. I've been looking on the spec sheet. We didn't push the engines too hard earlier, um, but the boat will actually do up to 27, 28 knots. So yeah. you've kind of got a really quick cruising boat or a long distance cruiser. Well, I was, um, when we were doing about um, 16 knots, um, 17 knots just cruising around out in the bay, and we're just doing just a shade over 2,000 reps. So really not really, and it didn't feel like the boat was struggling at that sort of speed at all. And of course it isn't because it's a 28 knot boat. So doing that sort of speed, again, I think it would be a very economical boat, even at sort of those sort of cruising speeds um, that would do a lot of miles. Um, I do like the fact that you've got the little stools as well. So these can be placed around to add people around the table if need be. Um, and again, there's storage everywhere. There's more storage underneath the helm seat. I do like this little, how that's been even built with a work surface yeah, it's quality, that isn't matches... It? The, um, the kitchen, and there's storage in there all the way along as well. And there's another cupboard, the other end, that's just access through there. Um, and 
Um, well, yes, you want to go to the helm? Yeah, why not? So, yeah, so the, the helm, I said, I did open this door, but it's got a separate catch here. So you can see the door again, it's a full, full C door. Um, but if you're short-handed, um, it's very easy. And one of the things they say, actually, in the particulars of the boat, is the boat has been built with a view that if someone is on their own, they could still do long passages. You've got big, wide walkways, um, easy access through the door. So it's a good boat to even shorthand, despite being 50 foot long. Um, so that's that door. Um, and then the rest of the, the controls and all of the dials, everything is set out in a very, very functional way. You've got replication of the flybridge of your Raymarine autopilot, your tri-data, and this is your 12-inch Raymarine hybrid touch um, plotter here. Now, a lot of these, when you go to the home screen, you have lots and lots of buttons. Most of them don't work on most boats because they haven't got all the features, but this boat does. So if we click on Fish Finder, if we start off here, um, you can see that this has actually got a down vision scanner. So even if we're going somewhere, you can actually see little weeds and kelp growing on the bottom there because the down vision is a very, very high quality uh, scanner. And it was great early as we came into Belfast. There were a lot of changes in the um, depth and we could really see it picking up everything there. Um, if we go back, um, both fitted with radar. So as I mentioned, you've got that digital radar. Um, it gives a colour display on here as well. So that just press TX to start that transmitting and you can see the dome will start to spin. There we go, so that's starting to pick up an image there. Um, we've also got all the data. Now the engines are off at the moment, but uh, it's quite nice to see that all of the engine data is interfaced in here as well. So you can customise these screens, so you can have all of your temperatures next door to each other, so you can see any variances between the engines. Um, and this is all just through these different screens, giving you, um, yeah, everything that you want from a navigation point of view, but also your fuel levels, what the engine's using, uh, your alternator charges, etc. So it's really nice and functional. And um, certainly... It's, it's also yeah. got a camera as well. Oh, it's you forgot about the camera. So there is an engine bay um, camera. So yeah. it really shows you then. So you can keep an eye on the engine bay. So if, you've, so if you are doing long passages at sea, you can keep an eye on the engine bay and just make sure everything looks okay down there without nice, having it? to physically go down. So it's a really nice feature and it's infrared as well. Um, so it's, there's lights on in there at the moment, but when the lights are out, which you can just turn them out, it switches to infrared so you can see them, so you can still see. Amazes me how that does. It's always, always, I've got one actually on my own boat and the first time I turned it on, I was like, oh, I left my engine bay light on. It's amazing efficient, yeah. amazingly efficient yeah. picking up light. Um, the feeling we keep saying on this, uh, we keep using the word little ship, but it's so appropriate with this boat. When you stand, when you sit here, you know, the boat is so beamy. It's nearly mm. five metres wide. And that's where it gets this fantastic amount of accommodation and cabin space. But here you do feel that you are in command of a ship. You know, you've got all your controls nicely at hand. You've got a great point here uh, to rest your feet on. But for long passages, sitting here for hours on end, it would just be pretty effortless with this boat. Um, there's also an upgraded VHF up here, so there's another Raymarine VHF at the top there. Um, and then you've got a colour forward sonar, so that's a, some form of echo pilot. I'll be honest, we didn't test that, so I don't know much about that. Um, but it says it's got a forward sonar echo pilot. Um, and as Jonathan said, you've got your Volvo EDC controls. And then here you can run through your diagnostics, which come up on your displays there as well. What's the Furuno use it? Navtex. It's uh, Navtex. Ah, so that's so it's get shipping, shipping forecasts and things, and things like that. Things so like if that. you are, you know, out at sea, then you get all the latest shipping information, which is really, really useful. Yeah. Um, so it has trim tabs as well, controlled by there. Um, and then, of course, you've got the three windscreen wipers. They are wash as well, um, and very big wipers to clear this great screen. You can see, looking out, uh, I've drove it downstairs as well as up on the flybridge. Um, and the nose doesn't ride high, you still have great visibility forward, um, but not great visibility backwards. That's probably the one see. compromise we would say on the boat that we, yeah. did, we did notice. And something that could easily be added would be, I think this boat would benefit from a rear camera. Yeah. Uh, if you would have a rear camera on here, because when you're manoeuvring in here, you don't have a view at the transom, uh, that would be something I think we would add. Well, easily interfaced yeah. with the Raymarine, it's already got a camera you know, that, that installation, so easy to do. And really perfect, especially when, like Andrew says, when manoeuvring. I like the helm seat. Yep. That's a double helm seat, so you can have someone join you as well. I just like the quality of it. I like the mix of the wood and the stainless steel. And again, it is adjustable height, um, and you can move it forwards and backwards as well. You can see Andrew's got his feet off the ground at the moment, but you do have a little step there that you can put your feet against when you're going along. Mm -hmm. um, so you can really get the best position. The battery switches, on neatly in this cupboard and they light up to tell you when they're on 
and we can also start and stop the generator from here um, and then you've got the battery charger control which shows you the condition of the um, um, the battery charge state and then obviously the shore power at the moment shore power is not on at the moment because they seem to be doing something to the shore power in the marina today um, but um, um, but of course that wouldn't really matter because if you wanted power we can start the generator yep. right we need to start looking at the cabin we do because this uh, I was talking about power it's 28 we, minutes in when we're talking about power we do have a lot of power on this boat so it's got four domestic batteries all of which are 200 amp hour so there's a lot mm. of power there as well yeah. so right so let's, right, let's go I'll follow you down through. yes come through this way so we're going to go into the forward so into the bow the first bedroom actually I'm gonna uh, jump on the bed so you had to get in there just because I did some lounging earlier yes. <laughs> Go. Oh, go on, we all know what you're going to say next. What, this is. <laughs> what is that? Is that like a weird... it's a some form of cushion, I think. Right, so um, uh, as some of you may know, <laughs> there it comes. I'm <laughs> I'm six foot tall, um, so we like to test the size of the beds, and um, yeah, I think I could sleep quite comfortably here. And um, there's an, obviously I can have a, someone with me as well. So great for um, um, two people. Um, there are boards here, so potentially um, there could be an infill here, but it's not, I can't seem to find it a board. Um, so um, but we'll just see if it's in the owner's garage or something like that, or in his loft, yeah. which things like that tend to end up. If it, if it isn't, it's certainly got the option there that people could add one if they wanted to. Yeah, it's just a matter of making a board to fit here and then a infill cushion. Um, very easy. Um, so in here, though, um, apart from the array of cupboard storage along both sides, um, see how deep they are. So fairly deep, so you can get quite a lot of your bits and pieces in there. Don't worry, you'll soon fill it up. <laughs> um, and then there is a equal size wardrobe either side. So there's, and they're both lit. All the wardrobes, well, most of them seem to be lit as well. So as soon as you open them up, you can see a little light will come on. Um, so and that's lit. And I like the way they're vented as well mm. to stop the that's just for airflow. Um, there is a television in here as well. Let me just there and it does have a built-in DVD player um, so very nice little addition speakers in the ceiling um, because again you've got this opus unit here so then you can sort of just pick what you want mm. so you can have the, the radio playing here otherwise you can go to your TV and do what you like and you can also interface there's actually a plug-in as well as AV sort of plug-ins as well that you can do um, as well. so it's quite nice there's a um, reading light so you can actually, it's kind of is it designed to sit the other way then? I was just thinking that. <laughs> That's exactly Let's, give what that I was thinking. Let's give that a go. Let's give So feet this in. Yes. Yeah, that makes more sense. That's and good. I can read in bed as well. Um, there's actually lights, there's some mood lighting just underneath. Although it's going to be tough for you to watch the TV now. Yeah. So if you watch it, yeah. So if you watch TV, you go that way. Well, if I'm watching TV, I'm not reading, am I? Exactly. So this so is the reading it. end. That's, that's the, the TV reading. end. Exactly. Got it. You got it right. Okay. So that's the, in the, the headroom's good. Jonathan is de demonstrating your six foot prowess again. So yep. here you are, here you've you got are. good headroom height in there. Lots of height. And then one of these ocean air blinds where you've got the mosquito net one way and then blackout blind the other, which is nice to see. Perfect, standard. Um, um, cabin? Yes, do you want to try, you, try yeah, to do that one? Use. So pretty standard, this is a twin cabin. So ideal for children. Um, it looks again like there could be some form of infill, which may not be with the boat, but could be added if you wanted mm. to create three double cabins. So there's something there that could be added, um, but as it's set up at the moment, ideal for children. Um, you've got another reading light, which is just down here. Um, I like the fact you've got storage everywhere you look, every space that there could be something, there is storage. There's coat hangers in here as well. And then there is another ventilated, ah, there it is. We were wondering where that was. Um, yeah, and a lot so of the cupboards are seen to be distribution boxes yeah. for various things. So there's. There are more of those in other cupboards. There's a few of them around. So we'll find them <laughs> as we go around. But uh, yeah, all your main trips. So that does sort of, some of them are 240, some are 24 volt like this one. Um, so you just find where everything is. Um, ventilation in here is really nice. So if you're sleeping at night, you've got two opening portholes and you've got another skylight that also opens. Mm. And then easy access just in here. If you want to get to the back of the instrumentation, so that the helm is obviously in front of us, then all these panels drop out to give you really easy access to the back wiring and everything Very like easy. that. And of course, there is a heads down here as well. So yes. I guess we would call this the day heads. Yeah. So we go into the sink area. 
Um, so nice hot and cold sink. And then there is a full shower. Um, it does integrate with the toilet. So if the door's open, it's a toilet. But when you step in, um, it's designed to get wet this toilet. Um, electric flush as well. So they're electric flush toilets. And again, very good head height. And the shower is mounted on the wall. And then there's an access panel there. What's that for? Look, look at that. <laughs> I only just realized. Oh, this uh, toilet you can switch. I like it. Well, Andrew mentioned this the other day because he saw it on probably the other It was the other Sea Ranger, it was. <laughs> um, is that the, the one thing that you find if you do have a diverter valve to go into the holding tank, so this has a holding tank, or out to sea, um, is getting at it. I might be able to lift the floor up and lean down, lie on the floor and reach under, but it's very handily right next to the toilet, right where you want it to be. Um, I'm quite excited about this. Couple of them open the shit. What's in here? Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> we didn't know that was in there. <laughs> I didn't know there was a washing machine in there. But no, you really are self-sufficient for months in there. So it's a washer dryer. Where is this? They found the space to get that in. That's oh incredible. So it's got a dishwasher, a washer dryer, I am not with a buy, <laughs> It's no longer on the market. John's going to buy it. I'm buying it. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, you mentioned earlier about the worktop. Um, yes. I just love that this is throughout the boat. In all of the worktops, you've got this proper granite, polished grey worktop. It's really, really smart. And just nice touches of storage. And there's a heating vent in here as well. Before you go up, come this way, because I want to show you the next little trick. Oh, yeah, of course. Is um, actual quick engine access. So we were talking about it earlier. So what I'll do, if I press this button up on the ceiling, it electrically lifts. Speed this bit up, shall we? I think it's a good idea. We'll do it to music. <laughs> of course, now we're going to regret not putting no. the machinery light on from the top. No, I left it on. No, did you? Oh. oh, no, I didn't. Do you know, I've not seen it there, so it's actually a proper engine room. You've got... One thing I noticed when I was... Um, when we went out on the boat is that the engine noise is actually... Like the light there. Uh, the engine noise is actually really quiet. So when you're going along you're in the cabin, um, it's actually really quiet. There's not that much engine noise. And that's the reason, it's the first time I've seen under there, um, the engine is actually segregated with another hatch there. So often you'd have a boat where you just lift that hatch up and the engines are there and they're quite noisy. So it's quite nice yeah. to see that's all well I've closed protected. it again today, I'll put the light on. I need to put the light on, I need to put the light on. I'm doing it, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Right, uh, engine lights, yes. Right, we'll go back down, go back down, go back down. Don't stop watching because I've taken so long to put these steps up. <laughs> Honestly. The interesting driving out, you have to, so going out of Belfast um, Marina, you've got to ask permission, the harbour master, to go out and, and they'll tell you if there's any ships coming in. So we had to actually wait here for 20 minutes for a couple of ships to do some movement. You really should have been in television. That was a perfect fill then, I think they call them, weren't they? When you have nothing yeah. else to talk about. You it's quite interesting. Something. And then you get to number 12 boy, and then you can go for it, apparently. <laughs> right, oh, here we go then. Look, so now it's lit. Right, so let me get the full. And it's got a proper sort of latched door that you open. Um, if I come through. And just as we're going in, just before we go in, if you go on the right here, look, there's actually a storage. It's got actually these plastic storage boxes, engine spares, oils, fluids, all here to hand. So then you can go find your way through into this fantastic engine room. Um, and the engines are mounted. Um, uh, Hang on a minute. Oh, they are mounted. We'll, we'll cut this bit out. Yeah, cut. Just, just go, go, as if you're going in there. So just do, do it again. Go. Right. As if you're going in there again. And into this fantastic engine room. And you can see the engines either side, the D9500s. Um, they're very easily accessible to the water strainers. You can actually put ping pong balls in there, which I really like, because that shows you that they're full of water. And you can normally see them moving around. And the seacocks are just below. Um, and then through, you can through to the generator, which you can get all the way through. And it's quite a wide in between the engines, a big gap in between the engines as well. Um, and then we've got other strainers for the air conditioning and the generator, but then easy access to more um, distribution panels. And you can see the exhaust as well. And then down under here to the shafts underneath there. Um, for a very, very good engine bay. Well lit as well, as you can see. 
um, and then we're down here with the generator. The generator, um, let's have a look and see if we can see how many hours it's done. Um, 214 hours on the generator. Um, let's make my way back out. So very easy to do oil checks. Well, so the dip dipstick stick here and the other one here, and we can easily top up the oils if we need to as well. Um, Coolant's a little bit more tricky to do down here. You can check this one um, on the starboard side, but the port one's right over there. Um, so it is a bit more tricky to do. Um, so lifting the floor is probably the, um, the way to do that one. Um, but that's for the professionals to do. Um, but the beauty of these engines is it'll tell you if anything's getting low. So um, they've got a good habit of telling you when things need doing. Um, Pre-filters is one there and one there. So again, easily accessible. Um, so I'm gonna work my way out now. And um, there's a 240 socket down here as well. I do like the safety aspect of putting the corks on the seacock slope ready. Just everything's to hand, everything's neatly um, laid out. A really nice engine bay. Um, and even there's a little engine checklist on the inside of the door, look, just so you can just remind yourself of what you already know. Right, let's close this off. And then I'm gonna pass you back up to Andrew. Right, back away, back out. And then I won't put you through waiting for the steps to go down again. I'll Hello. you to Andrew and he can do something now. Thank you. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my way to the aft cabin. Um, because the aft cabin is one of my favourite places on this boat and the spaciousness in here is brilliant. Look at that. So this aft cabin on this 50 footer just has so much space in it. Uh, you've got a mirror there, you've got a television on that bulkhead um, and you can see all the way around here you've just got this lovely satin wood um, everywhere you look. Um, you've got um, hatches on either side, so they're tied up actually, the curtains, there you go. So you can open that up there lift it up as well so there you go so you've got ventilation all the way around you've got that lovely big window at the back which we spoke about earlier you've got a dressing table here cupboard space all the way along and it just is so set up for long distance cruising and of course it does have its own shower room now this is actually a bigger room than the other one so you've got here you've got your toilet um, you've got access again just moving it across from the holding tank to a direct outlet you've got the same granite work surfaces you've got a towel rail uh, two mirrors storage space uh, everywhere and then more storage at the back and a proper enclosed shower room in here as well so this is the larger of the two heads um, of course you also have a heating outlet in there as well so it's a really really nice space and you also have just up in here, access to get outside. So going upside there, you've then got access to this fantastic um, sort of balcony area. And look, oh. as if by magic. And how tall are you, Mr. Parker? Five foot five. Five foot five. You, sh you shrunk. all these years. <laughs> so <laughs> Jonathan, in his six foot frame, you can see here on the bed, plenty of space. So it's a lovely sized cabin. And it's a really, really good space. Double the storage. I do like... Um this little uh, vanity area, loads of storage. They do have their own stuff in it, I'm not conscious about opening. But access to everything as well. Lots of little accesses. So even if there's not necessarily storage, there's doors to access different parts of the boat. Very good, it's covered everywhere. Um, yeah, you're trying to open that one. I just wondered whether it could be done from inside. It has <laughs> to be done from up outside, a bit. There's something on, I think the covers are on is top. Fine? Yeah. But you can see there's good access there. You've got a little ladder, it goes up to the top. Um, and as Jonathan said, this has got its own heating um, system for the rear cabin. And then again, inside a locker, you've got another um, switch panel in here. Now that is his switch supply panel F. So that gives you an idea of just how many panels there are around. And I always find this quite entertaining when you have a wardrobe that has its own little window. I quite like that. Um, so storage space all the way here and again just look a little bit of space there so what they've done is they've put a racking system in there so it's very very easy to use john has found another bit of storage space in here i think that's access i think that's access to another part of the engine bay Back of the there's engines, a panel you can unscrew yeah but but even to go to the trouble of putting doors on here yeah you know with the locks um good bit of storage here as well there's even a shelf in here um he's probably put shoes another shelf up here the little hanging bits here which is quite nice and neat um, and then there's another cupboard here, 
um, with a shelf in, two shelves in as well, just for more storage. So everywhere that you can put storage, you can do it. And this is the kind of boat that you want to spend a lot of time on. Yeah, so it could be a liverboard. So people would, you know, or spend the majority of your time aboard with everything because you've got loads of storage to put everything away. I'll come back to that in a second, actually, the liverboard thought, because I was thinking that when we were looking around earlier. Yeah. So what we'll probably do, is there anywhere else we haven't shown? I don't think there is, is there? Um, being up the engine bay, being upstairs, being on the sides. Um, I do like the ceiling. I don't yeah, like it's this, nice. I like this design. Um, and there is a camera in here as well, behind yep. you. I haven't seen that. They've got the two, they've got the barometer and the, uh, and the clock. Oh, there's a little camera up in the corner, which is quite cool. So uh, what I'm going to do is let's put this, this stand's got a little tripod built into it. Let's see if this, this system works. If it works, in fact, that's going to be a bit of a pain to do that. If I spin that that way and then rotate that up. There we go. Right, let's go. Right. Sit back around the table. Sit back around the table. Get the other way around this time. Right. We'll go through some figures. I mean, a lot of people will be wondering exactly how long it is. It's called a sea range of 50. But with the extended platform, actually, it's still under 50 foot. It's actually um, 49 foot 8 okay. um, long. And um, the beam is 15 foot 11 um, with a 3 foot 7, so just over a metre draft. Um, a 14 tonne boat, but the air draft um, without the aerials and the mast, so you can bend that down. So the air draft is 14 foot 8 or 4.48, so 4.5 so metres. Um, so if you are considering it, taking it onto the continent and there's bridges, you need to just make sure that you can um, clear those bridges with that height, but that is with the mast folded down. Tell you something that's just leapt out for me there as well. Um, on my own boat, um, I've got a 44 foot boat and it's got a 270 litre fuel, uh, water tank, uh, which is tiny. This yeah. has got 800 litres. So I'm constantly, every three or four days, if I'm having showers on board, I'm having to refill it. So it's really nice to see an 800 litre tank on there, so which means you can fill it up and forget about it if you're living on board for at least a week, which is really nice. Exactly. Um, very well designed boat. The designer's Bill Dixon. Yeah. Um, look him up. We don't know too much about him, but I think he's quite a. I've heard he's quite a renowned designer. Yeah, interesting enough, the other Sea Ranger that we bought, um, uh, sorry, we did the walkthrough tour on last week, uh, the owners of that actually bought that boat because it was a Bill Dixon design. They did a lot of research into the differences between the brooms uh, and the Sea Rangers, and actually the Bill Dixon hull is a very, very renowned, very soft riding, dry ride hull, and they bought it specifically for that reason. So Bill Dixon is well worth looking up, as he will be one of the key selling points for people in the know on this boat. Um, so we mentioned earlier just about that liverboard side. I just want to pick up on that for a second because I think people don't think enough about the opportunity to live on board boats and I think this boat really does lend itself for that. So I mentioned earlier this boat is going on the market around about £300,000. Now in terms of what £300,000 get you on the housing market nowadays, it's not an enormous property. But if you put that into this term, what you're getting with this boat is three double bedrooms, two two. Um, two areas, there's a noise, I think it's from outside, um, two seating dining areas, outside terrace, um, plenty of space all around outside, you've got a fully equipped kitchen, so dishwasher, washing machine as we found, tumble dryer, um, you've got everything that you need on board this boat to live aboard in huge comfort for yeah. three hundred thousand pounds, so it's, you can be very blasé. You forget, you forget, you, you've got the sea view. Yeah, well, 100%. What can you buy? Yeah, yeah. With this accommodation on the, you know, overlooking the water, and you can move it to other marinas, other places, yeah. you know, where it is now. And what what can you get for three hundred thousand in the middle of Belfast city centre? Yeah, it's true. You yeah. know, with this sort of accommodation. And I, th uh, I think that's just not that's overlooked a little bit. People can be sort of, you know, who has three hundred thousand pounds to spend on what could be just a leisure toy, but stop thinking like that. This could be a liverboard for three hundred thousand provides you a fantastic home. Yeah. And if you just want to do long, if you just want to get away mm. for a few months and just do a long trip on a boat, it's perfect because it's got everything you need on board, but also, um, um, also it just it's just got that capability yep. as well. So that ocean going capability that is the main power. I just tweaked that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, we did yeah, that exactly yeah, so the same time. So so we said earlier we thought the pontoons. Back on. <laughs> we thought they were messing around the pontoon, and they are because the mains meter keeps going on and off. There's workmen down there as well. So I think that pretty much covers up. This has been one of probably our longest walkthrough tours, but it gives you an indication of how much we've had to show you on this boat because it's just packed full of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's a boat. That
spoke, we've come over to Ireland to film, the owner's asked us to come over here, and we'll talk a little bit more in another video about a marketing-only option that we've given to this owner. Um, but it's a fantastic boat, and yeah, I think from the moment we stepped on board it yesterday and started familiarising ourselves with the boat, um, I think we've both really fallen in love with it. It's a great yeah. boat. The, the marketing-only option we give customers is really um, to showcase the boat in the best light that they possibly can um, for an owner and then the owner will then proceed to do the viewings and organise the sale from there. Um, so we're really conscious to do a really good thorough walkthrough tour um, on here because you know, it, it, no matter where you are, you can really see how this boat is in its current light. Yeah. And of and course, coming all the way to Belfast, we don't want to miss anything. Absolutely. So I think that pretty much wraps everything up. So thanks as always for watching. I'm gonna say it this time, if you got this far and enjoyed it, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's great to see the subscriber numbers going up and we'll be hitting 7,000 subscribers very, very soon. Very good, very good. Well, thank you again and see you on the next video. Thanks so much.